All right, so in this video, we're going to see the decline of the Qing Dynasty, which was started by the Manchus, because they have inside and outside problems all at the same time. They have external pressure coming from the West, uh, the Europeans and even the Americans wanting more access to China, more trade with China, applying constant pressure to China. Uh, and then while that is going on, they have a wide range of internal problems. Uh, the government is becoming quite corrupt. There's a lot of peasant unrest, uh, in part because of famine and lack of good land. There's also a lot of incompetence uh, within the government. It's getting easier and easier to get a government job just based on who you know. It's not supposed to be that way. Uh, there was famine, which will lead to peasant unrest. And there's also a lack of large-scale industry. So the West, you know, is industrializing, is having the Industrial Revolution, and China is not. So it's going to fall behind in technology it's not going to be able to keep pace and one of the first huge signs of weakness uh was the opium war uh see britain had a very unfavorable balance of trade with china because china had all kinds of stuff britain wanted like tea silk and porcelain so british silver was flowing into china but britain didn't really have anything that china wanted until britain figured out that they could sell opium to china that's a highly addictive narcotic it's a drug uh, and they could grow it in India, which Britain owned, and then ship it to China. And this began to reverse their balance of trade problem. But obviously China, China was very upset about this because it's such a destructive drug. So China seized this illegal opium. Because remember, Britain only had access to one port, uh, Guangzhou. Uh, so they seize the, the opium and they destroy it. And then Britain demands that China pay for the price of the opium. They refuse and war begins. And Britain easily defeats China. The British Navy sails up the Yangtze River all the way up to the capital uh, and forces China to surrender and sign the Treaty of Nanjing. Uh, the Treaty of Nanjing gave Britain uh, the island of Hong Kong and gave it access to five ports. So instead of one port, five ports. And in each of those five ports, Britain got to practice extraterritoriality, which meant there were special zones in each of those five ports where British laws applied, not Chinese laws. And the sale of opium was legal in Britain, uh, so now they could uh, continue to sell their opium in China. Uh, China also had to pay for the war and pay for the damages. Uh, and that's what it says in the treaty, damages. It never mentions the word opium uh, in the treaty. It says for damages. And then once Britain has access to five ports, course, the other Western countries begin to apply pressure to China for the same access. And China has to give it because there are no state to say no. This is followed up with the Taiping Rebellion, the Heavenly Kingdom Rebellion, led by Hong Zhu Quan, who thought he was the younger son of Jesus, given the God-given mission to purify China of evil, which means get rid of opium, get rid of alcohol, get rid of foreigners, and get rid of the Qing, because the Qing aren't Chinese, they are Manchus. And I would argue that the majority of his followers probably did not believe in the younger brother of Jesus part, but what he is offering uh, is very appealing. Uh, he, he ends up with his own small kingdom in northern China, uh, and he promises land for everyone. He promises equality between men and women. He promises that all property will be held in common, that everyone will be equal, and that there would be no classes. This is very appealing to millions of Chinese. And the Taiping Rebellion goes on for about 14 years. Uh, for most of those years, foreigners, the Westerners, don't do anything about it because the longer the Taiping goes on, the weaker China becomes. The weaker China becomes, the more demands you can make of China. This changes once the Taiping begins to expand close to those ports, which would interfere with trade. Then the foreigners help China defeat Hong Xu Quan and the Taiping. But because of China's weakened state, right, they end up signing the Treaty of Tianjin, which legalizes opium trade. Because of its weakened state, you have the rise of warlords. Uh, during the Taiping Rebellion, there was a need for protection, uh, and the Chinese government couldn't do it. So these rich landowners would hire their private uh, armies to protect their lands and protect surrounding villages for a fee. Uh, and once the Taiping was over, these landowners, these warlords, so their private armies, they did not disband their army. Because for you know, years, basically, these warlords were the government in the area. Now that they have power, they are not going to give it up. It doesn't work 
that way. So now you have the, these warlords running their territory like their own private kingdoms inside of China, while at the same time, the Westerners are applying more and more pressure on the Chinese government to give them more and more access.